Didn't I say class? Isn't this just inverse variation? Yeah. Yeah. Number one, you can overthink number one to the nth degree and do a bunch of calculations and you can probably figure it out. But you just basically have to know that this is inverse variation. Why? Because the faster you walk, the less amount of time it takes you to do that. Or the slower you walk, the more amount of time. So they go, they go, one goes up, one goes down. So all you need to do is make yourself a little bit of a table here. You know that three miles per hour took 15 minutes. And then they said, well, uh, if you went nine minutes, how fast would you have to go? In inverse variation, in inverse variation, the x and the y multiplied together always have to give you the same thing. So these two numbers times themselves will always have to give you 45. So you just have to know what number times 9 gives you 45, and that is 5. You know, if you were going at 1 mile an hour, it would take you 45 minutes. If you were going at 9 miles an hour, it would take you 5 minutes. If you're going at 45 miles an hour, it would take you 1 minute. But just know that it's inverse variation, and it should be one of the simplest problems, really, in the history of man. I got four. All right. That's not about what you got. It's what you wrote it. I'll get you some answers. And then you said problem number two? Yes. So you, Carter, you had the formula for the volume of the sphere and got it wrong. Yes, I have. What is the volume of the sphere? Volume equals uh, pi, pi squared times radius. No, pi times radius. Wade, what's our volume of the sphere? 4 thirds pi radius cubed. 4 pi radius cubed divided by 3, or 4, four pi radius cubed, however that works. So make sure you have that written down, because that will come in very handy. And here it said the diameter of this shape all the way through from one side to the other is 6 inches. So simply, Carter Westfall filling in the blanks, Volume equals 4 pi, what's the diameter uh, radius? 3, are you right? Yes? Yeah. All over 3. What did I do? 1, 1, 3. Oh, 1, 1, 3. Did you say that wasn't going to give you the 36 out of number? And then since you got this here, you can just cross off 1, 3 with the bottom 3. You end up with 9 times 4 pi, which is 36 pi inches because it's volume. And then while we're there, you might as well write down the formula for the surface area of a cube, which is simply 4, isn't it? 4 pi r squared. Okay. In other words, it would take 4 areas of the same size circle to cover that whole thing. Wait, two and three were the same answer, right? Correct, because you end up with four times five times three times three. Now you can't expect that on tomorrow's Carter. Don't just say, oh, what happened? It happened this time. That doesn't mean it's going to be the same tomorrow. Will number one still be inverse variation? Or it will be. be right? I'm very sure that it will continue on with the inverse variation. Okay. It will be the same type of problem, just different numbers. So it would be very surprising if we got it wrong, right? Yes, it would. Good. That's why I give you these here. Now we might as well go with problem number four because Tyler's going to ask me about that because the teacher failed failed in his ability to describe this. Have we never done? We didn't do lesson one thirteen. No. It doesn't matter. This talks about right doing this as a scatter plot, which to me is kind of long. And at some point, you probably do it. The the key to this is it says this predict, which means you're not going to get. An exact answer, and it can be different based on. You can get an example. You can get an exact answer. Technically, you can't. You can't. <laughs> okay. No, because so if, if in, in fact you are doing a scatter plot, the problem is the problem with this is this. 
The problem with this, if you're really thinking about what you're talking about, Evelyn, when you're driving a car, your gas mileage is not always consistent because if you're going up a hill, down a hill, fast or slower, you know, it's going to be close usually, but you can't say, the only way this would be exact is if this was always exact, and I'm going to guess it isn't exact. If I divided these all out, I don't think I always get the exact same thing, but I get close to the same thing. Maybe you do. I don't think you do, though. I mean, I could try. Well, well, Evelyn, Evelyn has tested me on this, so let's see. I've done it a different way, though. I've done well, I'm not saying there's not different ways to do it, but I'm saying I don't believe. The only way you could get an exact answer is if when you divide it, is if these always give you exacts. Uh oh, I don't like that. I don't like that sound. I don't want that sound. I want to go back. Okay, I don't, oh, I don't want to. I want to go back. The only way this would be the same is if you'd get the exact same, um, what do we call that? Uh, constant of proportionality or whatever they call that here. So here, 251. What is it? Divided by 10.3, which gives you exactly 24.368. That isn't right. Okay, I must have typed something wrong. 24, 251 divided by 10.3. Multiply. I guess it is right. Oh, that's, oh, that's right. 24.36. 24.36. The next one, if I did if I did 316 divided by 12.8, I get 24.6, 24.68. Notice how they are not exactly the same and, and they won't be. The next one, 346 divided by 14. And there you get 24.71. 24.71. Anyway, Tyler, you are just trying to figure out, you know, when we do mileage, we do miles per gallon. You divide these out, and look, you get you get this kind of thing. So what is basically what is basically your miles per gallon? How many miles 24. per gallon? Well, this one was actually these two are actually closer to 25. 24, 25 is really good, and that's why it's a prediction. So if you get 25 miles per gallon. You're just going to take this and divide it by your 25, and that's going to be your prediction. You get 1 is 25, and you get 31. You know, it's basically 11. It's going to take you 11 miles to get that. Would the answer be 11.6? Let me just say it's a prediction. So you get to the predict. I would only mark it wrong as if you put like 8 or 9 or... 25 or something that was way out of the ballpark. Your prediction hovering around 11, 11, 12, 10 is a prediction. Predict is not an exact sort of thing, so I could not actually mark it wrong, but I mean, unless it's way off. I suppose I could ask you to prove that. But Evelyn, I don't know how you got exact answers, but your math could be better than my math. I don't know. Because you could do it so. If you put it in order, it would be 251, you could find your overall gas mileage by adding all these together, dividing by all these, and get like probably the closest human average possible and divide it out, but I don't think you need to do all that. I'm not sure what Evelyn said, but we're just going to ignore all of those right <laughs> <laughs> All right. What I uh, faith. I uh, knew we'd have to go to some other slide, some other place here. Fifteen. That is a great one. Let's take a look at it. At some point, ladies and gentlemen, things start to pop out in your head when you see them. For example, the bad thing about this equation is anybody know? X squared is negative, which isn't a good thing. You can, you can deal with that. Just know that this way, this is what happens. All right, I need, if I subtract my 25 over, if I subtract my 25 from 9, what do I get? A negative 16, right? But I need to make my x squared positive, so I divide or multiply it by negative 1, however you want to do it. 
If negative x squared equals negative 16, then positive x squared equals positive 16. And then how do you solve an x squared equation? You just take the square root of both sides. The square root of x squared is x. And the square root of 16 is, they put plus or minus 4, because a negative 4 times a negative 4 also gives you a positive 16. Just watch out for those negatives. And as Tyler would tell you, the reason for that is, is you can't get this. Kinley Tyler. No. Well, but Tyler can do it because he would tell you the answer is. It's 4 high. Yeah. 4 times the imaginary number stuff that we don't know what these are. Are you going to 16 since I'm here? Yes. Good. Let's look at 16. I like 16. 16 is actually one that you should know how to do. First step, Carter A, is to. Multiply 2 times x and 2 times Right, distributive property because you want to get rid of parentheses first. So you end up with 2x minus 6 plus x equals 4x plus 2. Does anybody not get that part? You always want to get rid of those parentheses first. Step number 2 then is to add the positive x to x. Right. Next step is to make sure that you simplify each side. If anything is a like term, you want to put it together. And in this case, you have a 2x and an x. If I put a 2x with an x part rate, I get 3x. 3x. I still have the minus 6. I still have the 4x plus 2. There's nothing combined on that side. Now what? Where do I go from here? Subtract. You have your choices, by the way. You can move the x's to the right side and the numbers to the left, or you can move the x's to the left and the numbers to the right. You were going to tell me to do what? Subtract x on this one. This one? Yes. Okay. I like that because we're going to keep our x positive if we do that. Subtract 3x, it goes away. Here you're left with just an x. And then to get x by itself, I need to? Subtract 2. And subtract 2. But well, you asked me, you just did this problem. Why did x equals negative 8? I don't know, I have a negative 5 somewhere. I got a negative 1. I got a negative 1. Oh, I see a negative 1. Oh, I see a negative 1. Oh, you see a negative 1. There, okay. Negative 6. Oh, yeah. Carter. A negative 6 and a negative 2 is a, is a bigger negative than you started with. You owe somebody 6, you owe 2, you're going to owe 8. Mm -hmm. B rant. I see 8. 8? <laughs> Number eight. What is the denominator of four and twelfths? Three. Are you asking me that question? Is this the wrong? Oh, sorry. I was going to say wrong test. I was going to say that sounds a little. That sounds like a little easy for. Uh... All right. First of all, Brant, this is a square. How do you find the area of a square, Brant? Right. And what is the length and the width? It's a square, so everything's 2x minus 3. So you have to multiply 2x minus 3 times 2x minus 3. That's that whole FOIL thing again. It's a binomial times a binomial. A two-term thing times a two-term thing. Let's write down and see what happens. F-O-I-L. What do I get if I multiply the two first terms together? 2x and 2x is? Four what? Four x. Four what? Four x squared. Yeah. Four. Two times two is four. X times x is four x squared. And I move ahead and I go. Okay. What do I get on the two outside terms? Outside, outside. What is two x times a negative three? Six x. I'm sorry. Six x. I'm sorry. Six x squared. Negative three oh. times two x. Negative six. Negative six x. Then I have the two inside terms, which would be this one and this one. Same thing. Negative 3 times 2x, Brant? Negative 6x. Another negative 6x. And then I have my two last terms. Last and last. Negative 3 times negative 3? 9. Positive 9. And generally speaking, when we multiply two binomials that are kind of alike, those two terms will combine. What is a 6x and a, I'm sorry, negative 6x and a negative 6x is? I'm sorry? Thank you. Negative 12x plus 9. And again, it's called an expression because you don't really have a specific answer. You just have 
some numbers and some variables. That's what it would be. Carter A. How do you get 10? How do I get 10? Try to go to the right test here. Something's wrong. I don't know where it's at. No, it's not. It's not over here? Yeah, it's yeah, nine right there. Don't even I saw it on their side. Oh, I like this one. What is the probability that something that hits the parallelogram ends up in the trapezoid? Probability of something hitting the trap if it ends up in the parallelogram. That is your probability, is it not? Really, to do this, all you need to know is the formula for both of those. What is the formula for a trapezoid? Now we need not know the area of a trapezoid is one half base one plus base two times height. And the area of a parallelogram is a pretty simple one. It is just base times height. If you don't have that, then you're in a world of hurt. And the other confusing thing, I think Wade asked me this question, is what does this 10 stand for? Is it ten, this 10 from here to here, or does it go from there to there? Well, ladies and gentlemen, since this side is 16, that means this also has to be 16. So this 10 actually goes for that trapezoid. And maybe that messed you up. Did that mess anybody up? Yeah, I think we have to go with the same thing. Yeah, see, and that's, that's, I agree, that's kind of. So anyways, finishing the problem here on top, one half, base one, which is 10 plus base two, or switched around, it doesn't matter times the height of the trapezoid, which is 6. And that's going to all be over base times height of a parallelogram. They have to form right angles, so it's this 16 times that 10. Hopefully those are the numbers that work out. You get 1 half, 10 plus 6 is 16 times 6. Half of 16 is 8. 8 times 6 is 48 on top. 16 times 10 is 160 on the bottom. What goes into those? 8 does. 16 probably does too. 48 divided by 16 is 3. 660 divided by that is 10. Gosh, I hope the probability is 3 tenths otherwise. Yeah. Three tenths doesn't seem right, but I'm not sure it's really drawn to scale. Is the area of the trapezoid really just three tenths the area of the whole parallelogram? Doesn't look like you doesn't look like you could fit more than three of these in there. What? Yeah, you'd think it would be higher, but that could not maybe not drawn to scale. I don't know. Maybe it is. Maybe it isn't. Ten, sixteen. Yeah, it's not drawn to scale because. For this to be 10, that would mean there'd have to be 6. This much, if this is 6, there's definitely not that much room to decide that. So. so I would, uh, number 13. Right down here on top. On, on, is it bottom? Let's not say Solve and graph. Oh, yes. I, would, I knew something did ask this. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, inequalities are very, very, very similar to equations, except what has to happen with inequalities is the variable must end up on the left side, and it must be positive. Those two things will mess you up, just like breathing sulfur. They will mess you up. So if you were solving this, Tyler, what would you do? And there's no wrong answer. It's just that some are more complicated than others. I subtract the 3x to the other side. All right, I'll go for that. Subtract 3x to get this to the other side, which means you get x. But the problem with this is swap them so the x is on the left side. Right. And something to think about here, children, is this. Remember the whole alligator eating the bigger thing? What is the bigger thing there? Four is the bigger thing. Okay? It doesn't matter what side the four on, it's still going to be bigger 
So yes, by all means, flip-flop these, but if you flip-flop those, the sign has to flip-flop as well because the 4 is still bigger than the x. You end up with x, and you end up with a 4, but this sign has to get changed as well. So x is greater than or equal to 4, so when you graph that at 4, it's colored in because it's equal to, it can equal 4, and the greater than sign goes this way. Yeah, well, I was just checking to see how many people were listening. X is less than 4. How about that? You passed the test. So far, so good, kids. I had that graded and stuff in my head. And it was actually less than that is a perfect arrow. Shoot. You know, when I was in drafting class and we made an arrow, they had to be 1 16th of an inch. Probably it was eight, an eighth of an inch wide by a three sixteenths of an inch long. Just remember that in case you're graphing ever. Or was it a sixteenth of an inch by eight? Eight seems kind of wide. Amelia! How did you get 20? How did I get 20? Fortunately, I did not have to be 20, but the 20 was done by the book. And it is this. How did you try to do 20, Amelia? I put uh, six, uh, six squared or six squared or six. There's no fractions there. You made fractions out of something? Yes. No, uh, there's no, there's no, fra there will be no fractions in this because there are no fractions there. Really, this is probably what I would do. You could multiply all this together and get 48 times the square root of 48, but that's kind of goofy because to simplify, you have to break it back down into its factors again, so you're really doing something that you have to not do. So I would probably do this. These are already normal numbers, so you can keep them. The square root of 6 is the square root of 2 times the square root of 3. You don't have to factor out. Then you have that times 8, and the square root of 8 is the square root of 2 times the square root of 2 times the square root of 2. Are you with me on that? You don't need to factor these up because they're already normal numbers. So you could, I could multiply this together right now and say, okay, my numbers together give me 48. Now you're just looking for pairs of square roots, identical pairs. So you've got this square root of 2 and this square root of 2, which gives you a normal 2. You've got this square root of 2 and this square root of 2, which gives you another normal 2. And this does not have a parabola to cancel out with, so it's going to stay the square root of 3. And then multiplying these together, 4 times 48 gives you that, what, 172? 192. 192 square roots of 3. Do that make sense? Again, you don't have to factor trying to factorize 6 and 8 because you're just, those are already simplified, but you do have to kind of factorize those. El numero 17 was what, 16x squared? Or 16x to the 6. Faith! If you have two square root, like the square root two and square root three at the end, you multiply. You'd be multiplied to the square root six. Yes, 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 and yes. Parker, um, how do you do eleven again? Eleven again? Did I do it twice already? No. Oh, oh boy, here we go. How about changing a repeating decimal? Rule number one. What? You don't have the rules, then follow the rules or try the rules, sir. So you tell me you didn't even look? I didn't have my notes with me. Oh. I, I was not responsible for that. I highly encourage you never to take your notes with you when you want to do your math. Step number one is to set this equal to the letter F. I don't know why, but you put 1F equals point. Three, six, repeat it. Tough one? No. Second rule, most important, is to do what, Brant? 
You ask yourself how many digits repeat, which are two. So you multiply both sides by a one with that many zeros on it, which means 100. So this becomes 100F. If you multiply this by 100, if the decimal moves two places, you get a normal 36, but you still have the 3 and the 6 that repeat, because this just repeats 36s forever. Go with me on that. And then the next rule is subtract those. 100 minus 1 is 99 Fs. Oh, it's F because of fraction. I get it. What fraction is that? And your goal in doing all that was to get the repeater to go away, and it does. Because if you take away a repeating 36 from a repeating 36, you get nothing. But you are left with the, the whole number 36. And then solving the equation, you put your 99, you put your 99. Divide by 3, you get 12 over 33. Please don't put 36 over 100 as your answer. It's kind of close, but it's certainly Can't you do three again? I was going to do three again. I'm sorry. Yes. Even just divide it by nine. Oh, listen to these people. Now everybody's excited. Divide by three, divide by three. Yeah, you're right. Four over 11. Do you have this in decimal form? Oh, that's what I thought. I have point zero four. Well, Carl, oh, never mind. That was so, uh, it started out in decimal form. So if you got it in decimal form, you would end up with point three six repeaters. Wait, what was that? Are you looking for a percent <laughs> form? Because then it would maybe be thirty six and thirty six. Yeah, no, never mind. That was just a promise. Thirty six and four eleventh percent. What? Uh, Parker, yeah. how do you, or not how do you, uh, what was 14? Uh, 14 was 12m cubed minus 8m. Nobody's issuing over, what about these guys here? You can do it again. Just remember, negative 2, two to the third power, negative 2 thirds means you have negative 2 thirds times negative 2 thirds times negative 2 thirds. Three negatives times themselves gives you a negative, and it's just two times two times two over three times three times three. Nothing higher than that. Four x cubed to the second power means you have four x cubed times another four x cubed. That's what it squared is. And to do that, you just multiply four times four is sixteen. X cubed times x cubed is x to the Sixth power. This is three x's plus another three x's, or times another three x's. We did that one. This one here, might as well do it in whatever thing here. The numbers are easy because five goes into 25 nicely. That's a five. You need to make your letters positive, so you're going to move this b to the negative one to the top and make it be to the positive one b squared plus 1 is a b cubed. This is positive, that's positive, so you just cross cancel what you can. This is 4 m's, this is 1 m. One of the m's down here crosses with one of the 4 up there to leave you with just 3 of them up there. So you're left with 5 m cubed b cubed. Technically, the book will write it b cubed first because alphabetically it's this. But your first step is you got to make the negative exponent positive. Wow, we're going to get so close. Westfall. For number 17, how do you get uh, x to the sixth power? Well, I mean, we do it again. 4x cubed times 4x cubed, right? Mm -hmm. 4 times 4 is? Uh, 16. 16. So then I have to multiply x cubed times x cubed. What is x cubed? That's x cubed times another x cubed is not 6x's, six x's, six but x to the 6th power. All of these things I'm sure you're writing down for. I actually did. I'm um, sure some of them do. Where are we at here? Can we do all of them there? Uh, the whole thing I think you probably get that right. I'm not 
in the mass mail. On the first page, we did everything. Except none. We did do seven. We should find some. We did do five or six. Oh, five or six. No letter. Seven is fine. Opposite, remember, when you do ratio of lengths, opposite hypotenuse, you have to know what angle you're talking about first. And we're talking about angle A. Hypotenuse never changes. It's always the longest side, always the side opposite the right angle. The other two change based on what angle you're talking about. Okay. The two angles that make up A is the hypotenuse and the one that is adjacent to it. And if you draw an arrow across from angle A, that's the opposite one. And they wanted the opposite, opposite two hypotenuse. So opposite was this one, which you don't know, but it's Pythagorean theorem of four. Hypotenuse is that, which is five. Six do I need to do? I mean, you got you have to do that on graph paper. I can't change that. And seven, again, remember, it's all about angles opposite of sides. The shortest side is opposite the smallest angle, so angle C is the smallest. The next biggest side is this, so the angle opposite side is the next biggest angle. And the biggest angle is one opposite the longest side, which would be that. We are so close. Do I need to do six or no? Yes or nay? Okay. Sure. I would love to do six, but I, not, I won't do it on a piece of graph paper. I would draw my own. Here's my graph. You will do it on a piece of graph paper. Two comma one. Two comma one, and the other one is negative two, three. Negative two, one, two, three. And as I see it, this has negative slope. It's going downhill. They asked for the y-intercept. Well, the y-intercept is the easiest one because that's where it crosses that y-axis, which I'm assuming is two. Is it? And that's why you would do it. Y intercept is 2, because that's where it crosses the y axis. The slope, you have to make a triangle. Take the two points you were given, make a triangle. How high is that triangle? Oh, wait, it's rise over run. It's 2 over 4. The rise is 2 over 4, which is the run. Reduce it. The slope is negative. One half. Ladies and gentlemen, we, I believe the children are our future. We teach them well and let them lead the way. Show them all the beauty they possess inside. Well, they kind of have to be the future because pretty soon this entire generation of one of will be extinct. And the only thing this future will be able to do is play Fortnite. <laughs> <laughs> Got him. Got him. <laughs>